Marika is a well-known singer-songwriter here in Canada. Her song is played widely on Christian and non-Christian radio stations, and she's shared stage with people like Michael W. Smith and many more. She joins us on today's Turning Point. Hello, Marika, how are you? Good, thanks for having me. I just found out by accident that actually we have something in common. You, you lived some of your life in the UK. I did. Newcastle. Yes. <laughs> so would you remember of Newcastle? What do I remember? I remember the accent, you really can't understand anybody. <laughs> what, you could <laughs> understand that you lived in Newcastle? Yeah. That's, that's problematic. <laughs> it is problematic. I, I had about five accents my whole life, so mm. I'm on number five now. So you, you live here, you, you work here, um, but you grew up in a, a Christian family. Tell us about your upbringing. Yeah, my dad actually was Roman Catholic, and my mom grew up Seventh-day Adventist. So we, my mom actually took me to a, a Baptist and a Methodist church in England. So we always had God in our lives, I think, in, even for myself, I always had God in my life. But it wasn't really until I moved to Canada, joined a youth group, and that was actually at a Pentecostal church, which was completely different. Um, but that's when I sort of really started understanding who God was and who I was in God. So you, you, you come from nice, serene environs in a Methodist church, and, and then you come to the noise yeah, of the Pentecostal. Yeah, the crazy. Yeah, but it was more like me. I'm like, this is good. We could jump around a little bit. So you make a personal commitment to, to God, uh, to Jesus, and, and then what happens? You know what? I think, I think your whole life changes. I think for me, I did grow up knowing God. Um, a, a big turning point for me was really understanding the difference between just doing church and understanding grace. Um, and that was a big thing, just because when you grow up in that environment, it's easy to slip into religion as opposed to relationship. And there's just been a few different circumstances in my life where I really had to say hands off, like it was nothing that I could do and it was really only God. So I think the God stories are really what changed me. So the songwriting for you uh, and the singing, I mean, you were saying earlier on before we started that you came to singing uh, late, uh, but you, you were a player from, from young. Yeah. The songwriting, did you start writing early? I always start, I was always songwriting, um, not good songs, <laughs> but I always want, I think for me, because I moved to a small country town in Canada and there wasn't anyone to really mentor me in the style, like in a pop style that I wanted to write in. So I just, because I couldn't find other songwriters to collaborate with because of how small the town was, it was sort of a last resort. I had to write songs in order for me to even sing. So that's how I started songwriting. And so over the years, I uh, traveled and met other producers and songwriters. That was a very God journey of, you know, him bringing me just different people to collaborate with, and that's how my career started. So you, your, your songs are, are well known. You, you're played on secular radio, played on Christian radio. Uh, your, some of your songs were in TV shows yeah. and, and all that. Uh, for you, what would be uh, some of your favorite songs that you've written? Um, <laughs> probably the one that's out right now. It's called Real Life Story. And I've been married now this year for 15 years. Wow. And um, it, I wanted to just write a love song that celebrated our journey. There's a lot of songs that, that talk about heartbreak and breakups. And definitely there's a lot of that reality um, in and outside of the church. But for me, I just wanted a song that was from my journey. So I didn't really... You know, I mean, obviously people can relate to it, but for me, it was just a new beginning in my career. And I, yeah, I wanted to celebrate love and the power and, of love in our story. And you are. But what song do you wish you had written yourself? What do you mean? What song? Uh, I wish I'd written many songs, one of which would probably be Michael Jackson's Bad. <laughs> Purely for royalty reasons, but you know. <laughs> but what song do you do you wish? Do you listen to? You think, oh, I wish I'd written that song. Oh, I'd love to write a song like that. That's a hard question. Mm. Um, it's a newer song, but probably Adele's "Hello." Ooh. That is probably like I think every artist wishes they wrote that song. No, okay. <laughs> tell, tell me for you, what is it that you connect with in that song? Oh, I don't know. You know what? The melody is incredible mm -hmm. the way Adele sings it there's something powerful about this song I don't even really connect to the lyrics because mm -hmm. I can't even relate to the lyrics but there's just something powerful about the melody and the delivery of that song that that you can connect with emotionally and 
in every way. So, yeah. Now, you know, we've got a problem because I can't get the song out of my head now. And we're supposed to be talking. I'm supposed to be, you're supposed to have my full <laughs> attention as we converse, but I can hear, yeah. hello. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for you, 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 uh, you travel around, you, you ministry. I mean, you have the opportunity to live in the, in what we might call secular space. And you also sing in, in Christian spaces. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that you've seen in your journey that's, yeah. uh, that's encouraged you to keep going? Because for some people, it's either they do the Christian thing yeah. or they do the secular thing, but you, you're I strategy. get to do both. Yeah. I think the big thing for me is I don't separate the two. Um, I've never... I think early on in my Christian walk, I, I was taught, you know, well, there's the non-Christians, there's the Christians. And I, I started as a Christian artist. And to be honest, I wasn't super welcomed into it with open arms. And a part of, I think part of it was because of the kind of music that I wanted to write about. I wanted to write music that reached everybody. And so that is when God opened the doors for me to do pop music. And that's when actually my career launched to radio and film and TV. And I, I had just decided early on that I wanted to write music, whether it was, I, I don't ever say that I'm writing secular music. Secular implies that God is not in it. And all of my songs have either been inspired by God or have been given to me by God. So it doesn't matter if it's on a pop station or a Christian station. Uh, I just always, I never wanted to exclude people. So I, I still start, try to stay in that, even in the songs that I'm writing. And definitely people will try to segregate it for you. You mm -hmm. know, people, even now as the radio, the song's going to Christian radio, there's some stations that are like, we don't know if it's Christian enough. And I'm going, okay, well, I'm Christian. Like I love Jesus and it's totally Jesus style. So it's just somebody's mindset that's saying, you know, it's not Christian enough. Well, what does that even mean? You know, so yeah, for me, it's just, it's, I know that for me, I, I oftentimes can be placed on the, as an outsider. And I don't ever want people to feel like that when they're listening to my music. Marika, thank you so much for joining us on Turning Point. Oh, well, thanks for having me. But now you can't leave without playing us some music. So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, no, just kidding. All right, I'm gonna play you a little bit from my my new single, Real Life Story. Okay. Don't be afraid to make it up as you go. In this once in a lifetime I know that love is the one thing That matters most So let's write our story tonight Tonight You and 